as, as far as our testing. Um, we're going to give you the benefit for the instructors, for fitters, and for teachers as well. And then we're going to go into some of the data of the iron distance gapping. And it's an 82 mile an hour speed and a 92 mile an hour speed, showing the differences between a typical amateur golfer and a better um, player. And then finally, we're going to come to some conclusions and discuss the um, results. Uh, I like to um, be as interactive as possible, so if you have any questions, please send them for the end and happy to answer them, anything as far as technology is concerned. So, a little background on golf laboratories. Um, I founded golf laboratories in 1990. Golf laboratories um, was my first and only job. I started right out of college when I was 23 years old. I purchased a machine from Titleist for $100 that was powered by a garage door spring. And my journey with technology is kind of the journey of the industry. When I started with this spring-generated machine, our data analysis consisted of a couple of chronographs we've been using the ballistics industry to determine bullet velocity for club head speed and ball speed. We had culture paper here that we utilized for launch angle. We would hit a ball through and we had a grid that had one inch squares and we would put our chin on this pad and look at it for trajectory. And that's what quantified as a ball flight monitor back in 1990. So we started with the spring-generated robot. The one thing about it was it was very consistent. And my two biggest clients, to give you some perspective, were Callaway and Cobra. Cobra was a $5 million a year company. Callaway was a $2.5 million a year company. Um, Dick Helmstetter, who was the president of Callaway, used to come down, test with me, and one day he shows up opens up the trunk of his BMW at the polo fields where we used to test, handed me this club and said, we're gonna call this the Big Bertha. And that was, I was one of the first to put it on the robot and test it. So I've had the opportunity to not only watch the meteoric rise of golf tech, but I've also had the ability to watch the rise of data analysis and launch monitors. And You'll see through this presentation what that has meant to me as far as my learning curve. And it's, it's absolutely fascinating with the GC Quad. Whenever I think I know everything, there's something that this device presents that creates a new paradigm for me from a testing perspective, from an analysis perspective. And so it's become kind of a bedrock foundation piece of equipment in our daily testing. So, after we started in 1990, about two years later, um, I developed a swing robot looking at the industry. At the time, the main robot was the Iron Byron. Now, the Iron Byron is a great piece of equipment. It, um, it was designed by True Temper. It has one of the greatest names ever for a naming of a piece of equipment. And, um, it was utilized by all the major manufacturers. Now, for some perspective, the major manufacturers were Spalding, Wilson, and McGregor, along with Titleist. So they were a little bit different. But I looked at that machine, I looked at our machine, and I decided that I was going to build a machine that was going to be different than anything in the industry. And one of the things that I wanted to do with the machine was create more of a biomechanical model. And what I had learned through testing, all these different companies would come to me and company A would say, I want to test this way because I want this type of swing. Company B would say, I want to test this way. I want to see this type of swing. And I realized, like golfers, there are no two swings that are identical. And because of that, I wanted to create a system in which we could duplicate as many swings as possible. So we started selling these machines. We sold over 55 worldwide. They're used by all the major manufacturers. It's become the testing standard in the industry. 
They're also used by the USGA and the RNA for all of their conformance testing. In doing so, and working with monitors like the GC Quad, we have developed testing standards for not only golf equipment, but for golf shafts, for golf balls, and for golf tees. We have the ability to test virtually any piece of equipment that you can swing. This also was the machine that made the hole-in-one at the Phoenix Waste Management Open. Um, we had the privilege to uh, go there in 2016. That is me with about the shortest vertical leap you'll ever see, but uh, it, was, um, it, it was quite the experience. Um, I compare it to Mad Max's Beyond the Thunderdome meets the Coliseum. We made the hole in one in front of 22,000 well lubricated fans and were serenaded with Coors Light cans for doing so. So, the machine became a minor celebrity at that point. Um, there's some kind of common misconceptions in regard to robotics. And one is that the machine swings the same way. Now you've seen behind me, we're simulating kind of a typical test that we do that the ball goes straight. I want to show you a shot right now. And if you take a look at this, we're going to get a little quick at the top. If you see that ball was starting to curve left, that ball would have landed about 30 yards left. That was five degrees of change in our downswing. And basically what we did there, so the modern or any golf swing consists of a left-hand acceleration and then a deceleration. If you continue to accelerate, you simply miss the club. So at some point you have to decelerate. And when you decelerate, it starts to rotation through. We can control with the robot the acceleration and the deceleration. So we can simulate a shot, the cast, which that one was. Now take a look at this shot here. This is a shot where we're gonna be about five degrees late coming through. see that ball was heading about 15, 20 yards to the right. What we have the ability to do is we have a torque curve. So behind these covers is a servo motor. The servo motor has torque that's applied. The best way to think of a torque curve from a biomechanical perspective is you have a certain amount of torque in your body. That's related to the robot and call it amps. You have power. How do you apply that power? And how we apply that power, we can duplicate different types of golf swings. And utilizing the quad, we can analyze what the effects of those golf swings are. So suddenly we can take that same amount of power, cast it early versus holding on to it late, and be able to analyze and see what those differences are. Those differences we can also help give that information to instructors in order to enable them to teach better, showing that we can quantify what the differences are. The machine obviously is very repeatable and it can duplicate any type of launch conditions. Basically, if any one of you in this room can swing this golf club, the foresight launch monitor picks up the data we get the impact position, all of the head delivery information, we can duplicate that on the robot. So we have the ability with the launch monitor to now duplicate every single aspect of your downswing. And in doing so, once we've captured your downswing, now we can tell you what's the best club for your downswing, what's the best ball for your downswing, what is the best, how efficient. As far as variables are concerned, we have a number of variables that we can control. First variable, club head speed. We can swing the machine from five miles an hour to 140 miles an hour. So basically, if you can swing a golf club, we can duplicate. Attack angle. We have a X, Y, Z axis T table. We can place the ball anywhere in the stance. We can go as extreme as negative nine on an attack angle or positive six on an attack angle. 
basically within the limits of the human arc of swinging, we can duplicate as far as attack angle is concerned. Club path. This one's interesting. If you see this plate right here, by rotating this plate, we can open or close the robot. And in doing so, what we can now do is instead of going from just a square swing, we can come outside in and inside out. So now we can show you if you have a swing flaw, what the swing correction is. We can duplicate any sort of delivery. Face angle, this gauge right here opens and closes the club face. And in doing so, what it enables us to do, once again, looking at the quad data, because this is critical, is we can determine where that club face is in space right before impact and duplicate what a player is doing. And finally, and this is really important, impact location. We rely on the quad quite a bit to determine geometric center of the club face. And once we know geometric center of the club face, then we can start testing. So we use that always as a baseline to get going um, as far as our initial setup is concerned. GC Quad in testing. I have been very, very fortunate to work with Foresight since its inception. I've been in San Diego for 33 years um, and have been involved with the company since the beginning with the GC2, GC2 with the head delivery system, and now the GC Quad. And every improvement has brought um, new information to my testing abilities. And prior to the GC Quad, here's the best way to kind of understand my business. I was in an effects business, not a cause business. In other words, I would hit the golf ball, I would see what the effects of the golf ball were, but I didn't know what the cause was, what was happening that was causing that delivery. And it was utilized in this device right here that suddenly I got in the cause business. Now I could look at what that club head was doing, how it was being delivered, how it was affecting the golf ball, and suddenly I shifted my focus from an effects business to a cause business because I realized once you control the cause, the effects are guaranteed. And so it was a big changer for me in regard to that. Um, on a daily basis, we use this unit and we used it an hour before this presentation to set up all the calibration with this club for the test that we're going to talk about. Some of the things that we utilize this for are kind of interesting. The, the main bread and butter of my business is equipment testing. So we do performative equipment testing. All the drivers that you're going to see here in 2023, we've tested on this robot with the GC Quad to get data, to be able to analyze, see how they perform versus uh, past year's models. The second thing that we do is what I call swing lesson quantification. This has applicability to teachers. And what we can do, because we can duplicate any swing, we can duplicate the swing flaw, and then we can duplicate the swing correction. So let's say, for example, someone is four degrees outside in, and you change them to four degrees inside out. Same impact position, same swing, same club head at 90 miles an hour, you can get 25 yards more distance out of that golfer. And it's just a function of the physics that the quad provides. We go from negative three with an open club face, high spin, low launch, to positive three with a high launch, low spin, and a draw, and there's 25 yards of distance. The second thing we can do, we can take this, as I said, simulate the casting swing versus the lagging swing at 90 miles an hour same amount of energy we're just applying the energy differently in the swing we can gain five miles an hour more club head speed so utilizing the quad in conjunction with the robot allows us to test swing flaws and swing corrections and for teachers what that provides is a way to quantify lessons and say if you're swinging this way this lesson has the potential of being 20 yards greater. If you're swinging this way, this lesson might have the potential of being 10 or 15 yards. But it's utilizing the data of the quad and the robot 
that allows us to present those findings to teachers to help them become better um, as far as their students are concerned. We also uh, utilize the um, data as far as fitting applications are concerned. We take an entire universe of data that we generate based on this device and we can now take that data, analyze it, and tell you what is the best club on a high toe shot, what is the best club on a low heel shot, which club spins the most, which club spins the least. So we get a data presentation that is very thorough because of all of the data metrics that we're able to get out of the unit. And finally, we can do individual golf swing replication. We have worked with tour pros down to beginning amateurs because once we're able to capture the swing, what we're able to do at that point, like this swing right here, it's locked. This swing is locked. So if you want to put a new head on and see if it spins more or less, we can do that. If you want to see what the effects are based on this club head, we can let you know. We can put a new golf hole on and show you the difference in spin rates. So, once we lock the swing, an individual swing, and once again, it could be the top player in the world to a beginning golfer, that swing's locked. We then can use the quad to analyze different pieces of equipment and also give them feedback as to what their potential is overall from a performance standpoint and an optimization standpoint. So this screen right here kind of represents our bread and butter on a daily basis. Basically, we, we don't look so much at the graphics, we're a little bit more on the numbers side, but this is a good representation. For example, on a test like this, let's say this gapping test, our criteria was negative two on attack angle, so you see attack angle right here being presented as negative two. Um, on tests like this, unless requested otherwise, we try to keep a square swing path. So our swing path is zero to target, and our target line is zero to the robot. So we immediately set up for those, and then we analyze side angle to get that down to less than two to three tenths, positive or negative. And what that does is that takes the spin axis and it brings it down to a very small number so we get very little side spin on the ball. Now, once again, if you want to see side spin, we can do that, but for this test right here, we set up at negative two on the attack angle, at 82 and 92 miles an hour, and we create, and then we let back spin float and launch angle because that's simply a function of the loft angle of the club and the CG location of the club. And then we take impact location, um, make sure that that's in geometric center to get started. Okay, now down to the testing. What we did here is we wanted to look at gapping and the importance of gapping as far as players are concerned. Um, elite players, tour players, gapping's critical. Gapping's right, everything. Guys, the main reason gapping's for more information, they need to know when they put a good swing on, on the what Foresight the website. But for golf simulators and amateurs, you can always visit us at www.par2pro.com.